Hello guys, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and this series of videos we are talking about antibiotics, their mechanism of action and different antibiotic use, different antibiotic side effects. So today we are going to talk about vancomycin antibiotics. So what is vancomycin antibiotic? Uh, what is the vancomycin uses, vancomycin uh, clinical use, vancomycin side effects, vancomycin mechanism of action. So let's start to talk about vancomycin, particularly we start with the general properties of vancomycin drug or vancomycin antibiotic. Vancomycin is an antibiotic medication used to treat several bacterial infections uh, extracted from bacteria S. orientalis, okay, it's a soil bacteria. And vancomycin is acting like a blessing these days because vancomycin is the drug of choice against bacteria which are resistant against different other commonly used antibiotics. So beta-lactam antibiotic is the type or the class of antibiotic that interferes with the peptidoglycan synthesis of bacterial cell wall. So vancomycin is one kind of beta-lactam antibiotic, but there are example of beta-lactam like penicillin. There are example of beta-lactam like cephalosporins, but when penicillin is resistant, then we use cephalosporin. Once cephalosporins are resistant, we use vancomycin or fifth generation cephalosporin. So vancomycin is one of the drugs that is used against multi-drug resistant bacteria. So MRSA strains. So a glycopeptide antibiotic, which is used to treat gram positive bacteria. Okay. The vancomycin is named because it was going to vanquish the penicillinase producing Staphylococcus aureus. That's why we use vancomycin. That's what the name came from vanquishion or vanquisition of penicillinase production. Because basically the Staphylococcus aureus is resistant against penicillin, is resistant against most of the drugs. We call them multi-drug multi-drug resistant staphylococcus aureus strain or MRSA and basically this become a name for stating different kinds of uh, it's, it's, it's like a nowadays it's like a brand MRSA strain of a bacteria means it's a it's called as a super bug okay we call it super bug okay super bug means those bacteria which are MRSA kind they are resistant against most of the antibiotics that are available right now so we need to uh, res we need to resort with vancomycin and some combination of other medications that can kill them ultimately and get rid of the infection recommended intravenously as a treatment for complicated skin infections where the skin cells are being dying gangrene and all bloodstream infections endocarditis bone and joint infection meningitis caused by methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus that is m r s a methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus so generally we also call multi drug resistance staphylococcus aureus methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus so we just modify it according to our name but they are all known as super bugs okay so methicillin is the antibiotic generally uh, kills staphylococcus aureus for a long period of time but if that staphylococcus aureus bacterial species is resistant against methicillin then then we don't have anything else we only have vancomycin to treat that infection and generally as i said that is being used as iv the choice of intravenous use it as intravenously for the treatment of very uh, you know uh, delicate area infections skin infections bloodstream infections endocarditis bone and joint infections meningitis all these cases not any specific you know like gi infection utis and respiratory tract in all these infections we have different antibiotics to work if they fail then we we'll, uh, go up with this but this antibiotic is mostly active against the gram positive bacteria so what is the classification again we'll let, let's write about the classification they belong to the cell wall synthesis inhibitor beta lactam antibiotic cell wall synthesis inhibitor right cell wall synthesis inhibitor uh, and what is the mechanism of action for vancomycin vancomycin mechanism of action inhibit the proper cell wall synthesis of gram positive bacteria how uh, it uh, inhibits the cell wall synthesis by binding to alanine uh, inhibiting the transglycosylase reaction and alter the cell membrane permeability as well and cell becomes susceptible to lysis and cell dies so this is how it works you can see that this is a different sequences these are different sequences so here are the cross-linking event you can see that this is one segment this is second segment of peptidoglycan layer and this bead red blue and green color these are amino acids okay different kinds of amino acids are there alanine is one kind of amino acids red color this red is the two different alanines that are present there d-alanine now this uh, they have nag and nam structure okay the green one here is the nam and the blue one is the nag right so the nams have this kind of poly polypeptide structures associated to it 
and what happens is that there is this transpeptidation reaction by penicillin binding protein known as PBP which is also known as transpeptidase enzyme transpeptidase what it does is that it catalyzes the transpeptidation cross-linking of NAM sequences you can see the cross-linking is done here okay so till this point we know this cross-linking is done this cross-linking is very important to maintain a membrane integrity and cell wall integrity for the bacterial cell so the bacterial cell can uh, restrict the movement of components in and out regulate that and has a proper structural integrity now what happens is that this is the antibiotic we are talking about with a specific ring structure we call them beta lactam ring now this is penicillin in this example but vancomycin uh, vancomycin works the same way it will bind to this penicillin binding protein and as it binds to the penicillin binding protein it will not allow this pbp protein to further cross link the nam polypeptide sequence so no cross linking and as a result of which what happens uh, formation of of these bonds are not possible and as the formation of bond is not possible cross linking of peptidoglycan layer is not possible the cell wall synthesis is prevented and the bacteria will die so that is 100 percent bactericidal in nature sidal means killing death static means slowing the growth of the bacteria so this is bactericidal antibiotic and any other beta lactam antibiotic are bactericidal be it penicillin be it cephalosporin type be it vancomycin in this animated segment we are going to see the mechanism of action of beta lactam antibiotic so any of the antibiotic that carries the beta lactam ring be it penicillin be it uh, carbapenems be it uh, cephalosporins they all belong to this category and they prevent the synthesis of peptidoglycan layer and if the peptidoglycan layer is not produced in bacteria the cell wall will not be strong enough to hold uh, and maintain the structure of bacteria and as a result the cell will die so what is the mechanism of beta lactam antibiotic let's look at this this is uh, the structure of uh, let's say peptidoglycan component which is made up with two things one is the nag and nam n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid and particularly in n acetyl muramic acid we can see the amino acids are connected to each other so the amino acids are with different color code red green blue red are d alanine in this case and at the end of this NAM structures, there are these two D alanine residues connected. So these are the alanine residues, the red color, D alanine residue. And in order to build the peptidoglycan structure, in order to build the peptidoglycan structure, this D alanine need to have a proper cross-linking event. And for that, they require a transpeptidase enzyme known as PBP, penicillin binding protein. Okay. So this penicillin binding protein brings itself and interacts to the D-alanine and what it does it cleaves one of this D-alanine out okay and it brings another similar set of uh, NAGNAM structure to cross-link and this NAGNAM structure will be in place and transpeptidase reaction is catalyzed by the transpeptidation is catalyzed by the transpeptidase or PBB protein and a peptide bond is formed and this concludes the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan layer so this is a normal way of how the peptidoglycan layer is cross-linked now what happens when we treat this bacteria with beta lactam antibiotic so here comes the penicillin binding protein and here is the beta lactam antibiotic the beta lactam antibiotic is going to bind to the transpeptidase active site of this penicillin binding protein and what it will do is that it will not allow the cross-linking event so now this pbp will go and interact to the alanine and it will not allow the further cross-linking event so peptidoglycan cross-linking will be inhibited and as a result no cross-linking as a result no cell wall structure formed as a result the bacteria will die what are the clinical use of vancomycin? As I mentioned, it's most often used in the meningitis, pneumonia, skin infections, bone and joint infections. So endocarditis is the place where we can use it. Meningitis is another situation where you use it. Osteomyelitis is another place where you use it. Respiratory tract infections are the place where we can use that. Skin and skin surface infections, skin structural infections are the place where the uh, skin can be degraded or destroyed by the release of tissue cementing material degrading enzymes like collagenase coagulase and all these things so we we can use that as well okay 
and uh, clostridium difficile associated diarrhea and colitis is another place where we can use that so you can see that we can use vancomycin in severe infections in larger uh, and complicated infections we can also use them in staphylococcus enterocolitis so basically in colitis vancomycin is the drug of choice uh, along with other antibiotics so these are uh, some life threatening infections where you use them because in meningitis not all the antibiotics can work because that they cannot move to the csf the penetration may not be good but vancomycin can be used in all these cases but remember always the vancomycin is not used as the initial antibiotic of choice because its nature because of its nature of having uh, the beta lactamase uh, resistant activity so it is not being uh, resistant again uh, by any of this existing staphylococcus aureus so there are examples of bacteria we found which became staphyl which became the vancomycin resistant as well but very rarely so we only rely on vancomycin if the other antibiotic treatment is not responded by the infection otherwise not so what are the side effects of vancomycin so vancomycin side effects ranges for fever chills flushing phlebitis ototoxicity nephrotoxicity and rapid IV fusion, which can cause flushing even, which is known as red man syndrome, which is because we use it for uh, intravenous in, uh, fusion. So if you use it for rapid intravenous fusions, can cause red man syndrome. Other than that, it has fever, chills and all these things, very common. Flavite is ototoxicity, nephrotoxicity. If it's used for longer duration of time, nephrotoxicity may form. And anaphylaxis, obviously allergy and severe allergic reaction may result that can be life threatening if it is not known if the allergy is not being tested so it's always advised to test the allergy first against the vancomycin then start the use of it okay so the last thing that i want to talk about the vancomycin here is the resistance so resistance slide is not present um, in all these other antibiotic videos but we put it here because the vancomycin resistant bacteria is uh, already being developed it's developed here right so the alteration of the terminal amino acid residue of the nam nac peptide subunit under normal condition okay and uh, this is where the vancomycin binds so basically the two alanine residues that are present there is where the vancomycin binds so if i go back let me tell you that this two red color are the alanine this is the place where the vancomycin binds this is this is the place of interaction of the vancomycin okay so now let's let's go back and see uh, the different uh, resistant pattern that we're talking about the loss of just one point of interaction result in thousand fold decrease in the activity so this two alanine two d alanine is very important and if one of this two d alanine is re removed from this uh, structure then the effectivity of vancomycin will be reduced thousand fold so this is very very important the interaction point of vancomycin is very important if it is modified if it is removed then the vancomycin will not function properly three main resistance uh, variants have been characterized okay enterococcus physium enterococcus fecalis so these are the two so these are the resistant type enterococcus fecalis and enterococcus physium both of the populations have this feature of be being or becoming vancomycin resistance and we have van a type which is enterococcal resistance to vancomycin and tacoplanin okay so if we expose to these agents this van a type means is resistant against vancomycin van b is a lower level enterococcal resistance inducible by vancomycin but strains may remain susceptible to ticoplanin ticoplanin and vancomycin both are their van a type resistant very well resistant against vancomycin as well as ticoplanin but van b type resistant lower level resistance against vancomycin but susceptible to ticoplanin and third one is van c vancomycin resistant type c least clinically important enterococci resistant only to vancomycin but not resistant to ticoplanin okay it's known as constitutive resistance so if you have so basically if a bacteria found out from a tissue or infection which is vancomycin resistant we first assess whether it's a van a type van b type or van c type if it's van a type then it's very bad because we don't have any antibiotic right now effectively killing that bacteria if it's van b type vancomycin type b resistant then it's lower level resistance against enterococcal okay enterococcus physium and enterococcus fecalis type but susceptible to ticoplanin 
but when c means it's not clinically relevant so when a or when b when a is dangerous when b is still we have some time to go still if we use the vancomycin in proper dosage we can kill the target bacteria and can get rid of that target infection okay so that's all about the vancomycin, vancomycin general properties, vancomycin clinical use, vancomycin resistance, vancomycin mechanism of action, vancomycin side effects. So if you like this video about vancomycin antibiotic, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.